When I saw the spool antenna, I thought to myself, another NFED half wave, another real antenna. And I started to look at it more and more, and I want to share my experience with you today because this one is a little bit different. I'd like to talk about it. And the best way for me to do that is we'll talk about it as we set it up. Now, the first thing that makes this different is that it's an open source antenna, meaning you could download all the Gerber files and all the PCB files and send it off and get your own made. Or you could purchase this from Spool Tenna. This one happened to be pre-built and came with RG316 coax, 25 feet with a built-in choke. I'll show that to you in just a moment. But this Spool Tenna itself is an in-fed half-wave antenna, which works for 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands. Or the four bands that you might typically expect for an in-fed half-wave that has around 60 to 65 feet of silicone wire. The concept of this is you can unspool it really quick, which is nice for things like rapid deployments. And here is what I found in my testing. You see, I have this aftermarket table, I guess you'd call it. And it takes longer to open the table than it does to take care of the spool antenna. The instructions do specify that you could put something like a pen or a flathead screwdriver through the middle hole and unwind it. I will caution you that in the middle hole, there is a crossover because as a 49 to one, you could do multiple wiring configurations and this one has a crossover so that the antenna wire comes out here. And theoretically, the counterpoise wire would come out here. I did make the observation when I was putting my device through the center hole immediately that I was maybe hitting the magnet wire that crosses over and I was ever so careful just to put a small object in and guide it a little bit to the side. Now I want to point out that this is really nice for portable use. It's about 12 ounces. And I think when you're operating portable, you might be operating with a backpack and in a backpack, you might be carrying tent spikes. Do you see that? Do you see what I just did? Maybe you don't have a Ford Bronco with a really horrible back table. All you have to do is get another one of these. If you have two tent spikes, put this in the ground and then the reel will rotate. Do you see what I did there? It's nothing different than using a flathead screwdriver through the center, except I'm utilizing what I would be carrying with me in my bag in the field. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unspool this wire. While I do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try something new today. And I'm going to take this little piece of 550 cord and I'm going to unspool it if I can, just like that. Now there's a bongo tie that holds all the wire together. And we're just going to take that bongo tie and let's set it somewhere we won't lose it for right now. I'm leaving it right here. So when I forget, remind me. As we could see here, there's some nice 550 cord, and this is going to come in handy in just a moment as this is the end of the NFED half wave. But now I'm just going to keep pulling and I'm going to walk out as far as I can until this stops. It stopped. And the reason it stops, I believe, is that bottom piece, if it's not in the ground, that bottom tent spike plastic was probably messing things up. As you can see, that was fairly easy. And I kept pulling and kept pulling. It stopped when it was ready to stop. And look at that, we're at the end here where all I have to do is take this little banana plug and plug it into the spool tenna. We're ready to go, except I could take it a step further. And if I had a carabiner, which I do, I could hang the spool tenna on a tree or somewhere high. So it, so it sits a little bit higher off the ground. But before I do that, let's go out to the field and hook this up to my little dude. They really are a perfect combination. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a carabiner 
on the little dude. And when I get all the way out there, that means I could clip this end of the carabiner onto that paracord that's all the way at the end of the wire. Now, the thing about it is, is I've already ran the wire out the 60 or 65 feet, whatever it is out here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little dude, we're gonna take the top off, and we're gonna slowly place it over our PVC Dude Spike 2.0. And the nice thing I want to mention about this 550 cord, as well as the end of the Bienteco silicone wire, is there's a fold over. So in theory, if you ever needed more wire, you should be able to extend it out and give yourself more wire for proper adjustments of your antenna. All I'm going to do now that it's clipped in, I didn't think it through because there's trees right here, but I'm going to raise it up. And... Let's move it a couple of feet away so we're not in the way of the tree. Now this would be what is known as a sloper configuration as the wire goes from the end point being high down to the vehicle where we're going to operate at and it's going to be lower. I am going to take the spool out. I'm going to double check real quick to make sure I didn't damage that magnet wire and that's one thing I've been paying attention to during these last few days of testing. It looks okay. Now I'm gonna take the carabiner and I'm gonna find somewhere higher to clip it off. For example, it's like it was meant to be. And although things were made for different uses, we could take this little loop that's right here, a 550 cord, and we could also put it on here now. That way if the carabiner that's just hanging there ever came off, we'd still not drop our spool tenna. This also serves as strain relief to the banana plug adapter. Where my hand is right here, I'm about four feet off the ground, maybe even a little bit higher. So that is a good sloper configuration. Hey Mike, uh, yeah man, what, what logging software are you using? Spool Tenna offers RG316 coax with a built-in one-to-one choke to reduce stray RF. If you're not using a separate counterpoise, place the choke near the radio. That way the coax shield can act as the counterpoise while still protecting your gear from unwanted RF. Is this frequency in use? It's Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. As you can see there, there was a very low standing wave ratio and I didn't do any adjustments. That was just how it was after I set it up with the sloper configuration. Back in the office now after about a week's worth of testing and multiple activations. I did make the observation that on the bands 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 and 10 meters, this end fed half wave was less than 1.5 to 1 standing wave ratio. And this was tested from the factory for your specific spool tenna. That's a nice touch. But what is even a nicer touch about the spool antenna is that it does have a built-in counterpoise, which I believe this is the first real style antenna with a built-in counterpoise, and that could be nice if you're running short coax during an activation. Not only does each unit come with a test result sheet, but also comes with a full user manual, which I found to be very informative, as well as a quick reference guide. The quick reference guide, or the fast facts, does include information about how to set up and take down this antenna, as well as if you need a tuner and how big the spool antenna is. A quick reference guide in the field is always a nice thing to have. Finally, I made the observation that there's a groups.io page where you can go and you could ask questions or you could read information that other people are talking about and discussing with the spool antenna. I will link that below, but I'd like to hear from you. Have you ever used something similar to the spool antenna? Do you have the spool antenna and what are your thoughts? Thanks for watching the channel. Have a great one, 73.